Okay, good morning. Welcome back to Tiplo TV. And uh, average golfer is back here at Four Golf Chester. The shutters are down at the moment, but I can report it's a little bit warmer than it was the last time I was in here because it's absolutely Baltic. Still a few layers on, need a bit of a warm up, but what we're we looking at this morning, I'm going to look at a few hybrids, not head to heads, individual videos, but I'm going to start off with Taylor Made. The M3 and M4 range has been out for a few weeks now. I've not had a chance to look at the hybrids as yet. They tend to be a product that we sometimes forget about, but can often be, so when I say forget about, we're often interested in what happens with drivers. Um, but the hybrid were maybe a little less interested, but really important club, the hybrid, because it can be, it can really bridge gaps in terms of distances and yardages between your uh, top end of the bag. So perhaps from four iron into your next club. And it's interesting, the M4 range, let's take that head cover off for a while. Although I do like those head covers on the, uh, on the tailor-made uh, new range. Um, interesting enough yet, the M4 comes in a three, four, five, and six option. I think the six is lofted at 28 degrees and the three down at 19 degrees. So again, for those of you looking for a little bit more help, maybe in launch, uh, perhaps even in distance as well, uh, compared to what you'd normally do in terms of ball speeds, in relation to your club head speed, often hybrid can be a good option. So interesting to see there that you've offered uh, three right through to six, I think with all of this range, and I'll throw up some images now, with all the range uh, from TaylorMade this time around, really, really, not, well, I appeals to my eye anyway. Once again, the hybrid takes on that thin silver strip, the carbon high gloss finish at the back with these sort of uh, BMW type of colorings in and around the club head, and I really like it. I'm not gonna talk too much about uh, the, the technicalities of this club in what Taylor made a claiming. There's a speed pocket in the bottom here. They're talking about a low, low CG placement. And again, some help off the bottom of this club as well. So again, just picking that ball out of different conditions. So whether it be from the rough, tight on a fairway, a lot of versatility in a hybrid. Really interested to see. It looks a real interesting golf club. Real decent performer potentially here. But numbers will tell us I'm going to lift that shutter up now, stop talking, hit some golf balls, and then we'll see how this M4 hybrid performs in the hands of the average golfer. Okay, so the first thing to notice about the M4 at address is it really seems to come to... There's a white line, bottom groove is white on the bottom of the club face. And when it sits behind the ball, it re... it's the width that the white line is almost the width of a golf ball, and I love the way it focuses your attention purely on the center of that golf club, making sure that you've got that golf ball right in the center at address. I really like what they've done there. It's a classic looking design in terms of the hybrid. And again, from the images I've shown you at the start of the video, it's very much down to personal choice, but I love the way this hybrid looks uh, from, from address really. Thing is, how does it perform? The solid first ball. It's an interesting the sound here. It's um, I wouldn't call it muted, but again, I call it a softer sound. It's definitely been dampened down from the drivers again, or hybrid. This is obviously, but the notable thing in uh, in clubs of recent um, releases in 2018, they've all managed to dampen the sound down a little bit. I think, and like I said, just give it a nicer, softer feel to it. But again, that's very much on my ear. There's nothing wrong in terms of performance, there'll be decent strikes. And again, coming out the middle of the club face, which is, uh, makes a change. I'll let a few more balls and then we'll see what I think of this. We'll have a look at the numbers um, and give her over an all assessment. But, uh, Again, decent knock. And again, I found the middle of the golf club, which is unusual. I'm slightly out of frame there. Right, um, loving the way that sits behind the ball. I've hit some decent strikes. We'll look at the numbers and sit down and give an overall assessment to this uh, M4 hybrid. Okay then, so time for the assessments of the tailor-made um, M4, this one, don't forget. I like the M4 driver as well. And uh, to be fair, I think, uh, 
if I give you an overall assessment very, very quickly, I also like the M4 hybrid. Um, one of the key features, like I said, is I love, I, I, it's again, it's a traditional shape for me in terms of the hybrid. Um, I love the way it sits behind the ball. I think that's an important factor. And again, something that's very personal, but very much inspires confidence. And like I said, it just seems to frame that ball perfectly, like I showed you on the, uh, on the imagery. Um, but like I said, let's get into, into some numbers. Um, I struck the ball more than happy with that usual sort of few left, few right, and uh, expected to be. Um, club speed, ball speed ratio, very, very good again. Um, getting some good ball speeds out of it. Again, um, spinning at three and a half thousand revs, that's good enough for me in terms of this is, you look at this in two ways, I would imagine when we get to overall distance, you're going to be playing to some extremely long par threes or you're having a bit of a pop at a par five if you've managed to hit a, a bit of a decent drive. But either way, spin number at three and a half, that's okay with hybrid for me, I, I can accept that with a three hybrid, very, very good indeed. Uh, carrying on average at 202 yards, um, an important launch in at 12.6. Um, for me, I'd even consider maybe that club, and like I said, this is an important thing, it's how that yardage might fit into my bag, um, and, and like I said, how it might fit into yours. But the interesting thing is, for me, may even consider I'd be looking at the four hybrid um, because of a gap within my bag. But like I said, I like this idea that you can go for three, four, five, and six, and for slower swing speeds, I think that's an ideal option to go to hybrids, I really do. Um, it's just overall, I think with the M3 and M4 range, pretty much as you'd expect from TaylorMade, it's a quality range of product. Um, nothing wrong with it at all. Is it singing and dancing miles above the previous releases from last year? No, perhaps not. Um, I think that all you can say is you can just measure a club on a performance and that's all I can do and it's very very good indeed. Um, not much you can knock it on but I think if you've got a recent hybrid, I'm gaming Epic at the moment, would I go from Epic to M4? Unlikely. Um, performance like I said very very similar you're just talking about top end quality product that's going to perform very very well if you stick the right swing on it of course you can there's there's no magic uh, potion but my overall assessment would be this as ever they're my numbers if you are looking for a hybrid if you're considering a hybrid and you've got something from maybe a few years old then uh, get on in try it for yourself see what numbers you get and see what you think but I, I think like i said if you're in the market for a hybrid it's really worth a good consideration anyway that's me done i'm going to move on to i'm going straight into the rogue hybrid because i'd like to see these have both come out at similar times so i'll have some numbers on that very very shortly sitting in exactly the same position right see you soon 